Good evening. It's uh, Monday, August 16th, and uh, I'm going to be with you tonight, and it looks like my calendar is free to be with you every evening for our evening devotions at 7 o'clock. Greetings. The Lord is with you. Um, I know some people will be clicking on as they see that I am on uh, already. Uh, hi to Shirley and others who are clicking on. And uh, to Maggie, hi, good evening. Good to, to see you're on as well. Um, the um, uh, schedule for this week, I'm going to change a little bit. I want to move ahead and uh, uh, instead of breaking the first lesson, the first reading into two days, I, I'd like to just read that today, do the psalm tomorrow, and take uh, Wednesday to look at the second lesson and Thursday to look at the portion of the second lesson. I actually assigned it in our daily reading for next week but I thought I'd handle it together uh, this week because I'd like to focus on, on looking at this whole section of, uh, of the second, uh, at the epistle to the, to the uh, Ephesians. And then, uh, then after doing that on Thursday, then uh, um, just continue with the devotions for the rest of the week. Um, so uh, why don't we begin with, uh, may, as we do each, each day, uh, make the sign of the cross. We are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel lesson this week is from Mark 7, and it's one of those oppositional um, meetings be, of, of the Pharisees and scribes who are grumbling about Jesus or to Jesus about his disciples. And uh, the disciples are eating uh, food with unwashed hands, not following the tradition of the elders. And as Jesus responds to them in a very uh, strong language, he, he says, um, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, and he quotes from our passage today, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Uh, and, and that's why our first lesson was chosen because of its uh, connection to the gospel lesson. So let's then focus on the first lesson today, uh, which is Isaiah 29, uh, verses 11 through 19. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, as we hear your word this day, open our hearts uh, that we not be people who, who give you lip service, but our heart is far from you. Uh, make our hearts into good soil, open and receptive to your word, able to hear and receive uh, training and correction. Um, Lord, uh, we pray that you open, our, our, open us to this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Boy, opening us to God's word is always a, an important prayer because so often I can think of somebody else's supplies too. <laughs> the question always is, how is the Holy Spirit using the scripture to touch our life, to speak a word of training, teaching, correction, reproof uh, in, into our lives. I see Rob and Fred are on. Uh, good evening to both of you. So if you're looking uh, in your own uh, Bible, Isaiah 29, verses 11 through 19. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their heart is far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. 
Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, who say, who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker, he did not make me, or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding. It is not yet a little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a fort. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This comes in the first section of Isaiah, which is written to the people of Israel before their defeat from King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon. The second section of Isaiah is after they've gone into exile, and the third section when God's ready to bring them back home from their exile. But this is clearly while the people are still rebelling against God. We, we see that rebelling in, in the middle section of this passage, so words that just kind of frame the whole passage for me. You turn things upside down. <laughs> what is two plus two is four is not true. They've, they've turned everything upside down. They've, they've made people question what is, what is, has been, is, and always will be true. <laughs> kind of how some people treat God's word. Well, the, uh, the word is that, that, uh, that uh, they say, uh, they, they do their deeds in the dark and say, who sees us? Who knows? Well, God sees. And, and, God, and God knows. He knows very well what you're doing. Um, they they uh, turn things upside down. They, they say, uh, thinking of the, the image of the potter and clay, that the thing made would say to its maker, he did not make me. <laughs> well, there, there's, the, there's the lie. If God is the creator and owner of all that exists, if he made me like any creator, he has a purpose in mind for the creation. He has a plan for the creation. He has a design for the creation. Yesterday at church in the children's sermon, I showed some microscopic picture pictures of things people knew but at a, a electron microscope level they saw it with fresh eyes amazing pictures of of uh, human muscle of the tip of a piece of chalk of uh, the foot or the, the the leg or foot of a mosquito and of a a my favorite was uh, the the look of uh, the view of a of a kitten's tongue <laughs> just amazing if you hadn't seen that you can go click on and look at our church's service from yesterday and uh, move forward to the children's sermon um, God has has designed us so intricately I, I thought of the passage from Psalm 139 we are fearfully and wonderfully made uh, it's amazing at that microscopic level to, to see how wonderfully we are made beyond our imagination. Well, here the, the clay pot has been formed by the potter, but what clay pot says to the potter, oh, you, you didn't make me, uh, like it formed itself. Um, or, or the clay pot saying to the potter, well, he has no understanding. I know how I ought to be using my life. When God has designed your life for his purposes, for the best purpose for you, your best life possible is a life lived under his design. He knows how you created you. The sovereign God 
might as well not exist to some people. Some people like Jesus to be their savior. Oh, he'll give me eternal life, but not be Lord in charge of their life, telling them how they ought to live. God loves everybody. He's going to save everybody. I can live my life however I want, and I'm going to get saved. Well, that's not what Scripture says. But in this upside-down world, you turn, again, verse 16, you turn things upside down. In this upside-down world, I can live how I want. I designed my own life. Well, that is exactly what has led the Israelites to the place that they are at, where God is warning them that unless they give this final opportunity for repentance, they will be destroyed, and they do not take the final opportunity for repentance. Well, that's the problem. In our sin, we decide we know better than God. We do not live in dependence on him. We do not, as Luther says in his meaning to the, to the first commandment, we do not fear, love, and trust God above anything else. We fear, love, and trust ourselves. The clay says to the potter, forget you. But the grace of God is everlasting. First of all, he sends the prophet to call them back so that they won't be destroyed. Um, but they don't attend to his word. The vision of all that, that has become, come to you is like the words of a book that's sealed. A person looks up and says, oh, it's sealed, I can't read it. Or they're blind, they, they're handed the book, they can't read it. But God's word is not sealed. God's word comes to us first spoken so that even the blind may hear. And those who are deaf, well, they can have their, they can have their ears opened. The deaf, in the end, the deaf shall hear the words of the book. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy because our God, the potter, our God is, is gracious and loving and abounding in mercy and steadfast love. Our God comes with a vision to save us. And then, then to these people who honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They go to church. They say the liturgy. They say, oh, I'll pray for you. Or, uh, I don't need to go to church. I see God in nature. Rarely give thanks to God. Rarely see him. Uh, they draw near with their mouth only, but their heart. He may be their savior. And they believe that Jesus died for their sins, but that he calls them to follow me. Take up your cross. Deny yourself. Follow me. Oh, no, not Lord. Good deal? Yeah, sign me up. Lordship. The life of a disciple. No, not for them. They draw near with their mouth. They honor with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But even to these people, what does God say? Behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder. <laughs> the wisdom of their wives shall perish. The discernment of their discerning shall be hidden. But Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. The deaf will hear. The, the blind will see. The meek will obtain fresh joy. And the poor will exalt in the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah. God promises to do wonder upon wonder. To keep blessing the people of Israel. To always call them back to faithfulness. And any time they repent, to forgive them. His love is just so amazing. In this upside-down world, there's something you can count on. <laughs> you can count on that your self-justification won't get you anywhere. It will only impoverish your life as you live outside the design of God. But in this upside-down world, you can count on God. You can count that your sin, your self-justification won't get you anywhere. 
but you can count that God will not stop. He will not stop calling. He will not stop speaking. He will not stop forgiving, loving, sending his son to die for us, to make all things new, so that the deaf will hear, the blind will see, the meek will rejoice, and the poor will exalt. God is here. It would be best if we did not live by the values of the upside down world. But if we lived by the values of the potter who has formed us, who has created us. When it comes to the gospel lesson then, Jesus looks at the Pharisees and scribes and says that this passage that Isaiah wrote about, he was speaking about you. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. It, it gets them nothing. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men, as opposed to the design and command of God. He goes on to explain an example of how they've done that. Dishonoring God's word about honoring your father and mother and teachings they have that actually keep people from honoring God. But we'll get to the gospel lesson later. But, but these words, Jesus says, apply to people who are hypocrites, who teach his commandments, their own teaching, but not the word of God. God calls us to be faithful. I'm so pleased I've spent a little bit of time for a particular reason that doesn't need to be shared. But, but today, looking at uh, to gather some resources about the North American Lutheran Church that I'm going to be sharing with someone later this week. Uh, resources that, that, that right at the beginning we are Christ-centered and mission-driven and congregationally focused, or traditionally grounded and congregationally focused. We are Christ-centered and, and, and Jesus, uh, we know through the reliable word of God. We are traditionally grounded in the ancient creeds of the church and in faithfulness to the word of God. In an upside-down world, we are called to be a light, to live by the values of Jesus Christ and the Word of God so that we can discern. Last week on, I forget the day, I think it was probably on Thursday, the only day I was able to be with you, um, that on Thursday of last week, we read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10, try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. We are called in Ephesians in chapter 4 and chapter 5 to walk in a manner worthy of the gospel, worthy of the calling, worthy of Christ, to walk in Christ, to walk in love, to pattern our lives as Jesus said to the disciples, follow me. We, we walk following him. Our lives are his, uh, lived as servants of Jesus. He's the master, we're the servant. We do what he calls us to do, we follow him. This is the, the role we're called to live on. And I, I want to look at the specifics of, of chapter 5, which I hinted at last week um, when, we, when we look at Ephesians 5 on... Uh, on uh, 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 oh, maybe I'll do that Tuesday and Thursday because Wednesday is worship. And I wanted to look again at, at what uh, God has to say. In this upside-down world, the Psalm, first, Psalm 14, the opening says, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. <laughs> the fool is the person who is, says to the, is the clay pot that says to the potter, there, there is no potter. Or the potter has no understanding. Who becomes his own God. That's the fool. They're corrupt. They do abominable th things. There is none who does good. Uh, we, we, we are saved by God's grace. Uh, from Psalm chapter Psalm 14, verse 3, uh, Paul quotes it in Romans 3. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. There's an absolute need for repentance and reformation that we may be brought into the, into the, into the will of God and into a life that honors him. 
but God sends salvation. A prophetic psalm, Psalm 14, the words of the prophet Isaiah. To this upside down world, God sends a word and a promise. I invite you to consider where in, in your life have you been justifying your behavior instead of repenting and asking God to lead you, strengthen you with his spirit to follow him? Is it in your family or something at work or in your neighborhood? Is it in your thought life or some of your habits? Where have you justified instead of confessed and repented? God calls us to that, to confession and repentance, because he wants to set us free. And in the power of confession and forgiveness, you are freed. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We're an upside down world and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to take a moment to think about your life and where you have justified something that ought to be confessed. Not to pick a hundred things, just pick one. Got it in mind? Heavenly Father, I have lived as part of the upside down world, the clay talking to the potter in insolent ways. Lord, you know that area of my life that I'm thinking of. For each of us, I pray. Pray with me, please. Lord, you know this area that I name silently to you now. I have justified it. I ask you to forgive me, both for the self-justification, which can never work, and for the thing I have done or failed to do. Forgive me, Lord. Make me new. Give me a heart that follows you. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was your prayer, then be assured that as a called and ordained minister, by the authority that Christ gives to me, I say to you, your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, and that the promise is that he is, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Therefore, go in peace. Remember, uh, thank you for joining me today. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. I'll see you tomorrow evening on Tuesday. Bye-bye.